Captain Adam here from Real to Real Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to Captain's Roundtable today. We have some great captains with us. Uh, can't wait to introduce them. But before we get started, we got to give a big shout out to uh, Ludington Beverage and to Captain Chucks for making this all happen. So real quick, do us a favor before we get started, hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the reminder bell and you'll get updates every time we release a new video. So let's meet those captains. Captain Kevin Hackert, Hackert Family Charters. Uh, we run the Real Faster, uh, 37 foot Sea Ray out of Ludington, Michigan. Dennis Plamondon uh, with Clocked Out Charters, fishing out of Ludington, Michigan. Hi, I'm Captain Dave Ellis, Sam Slayer Sport Fishing Charters out of Ludington, Michigan. All right, thanks for tuning in today. We're going to talk about electronics. Uh, we're going to talk about what your most important electronic is and why, and then how you use all of your electronics throughout your fishing day. Um, I'm kind of interested to see what people have to say about this. So, uh, Kevin, you want to kick us off? Sure. We'll kick right. it off. Well, the one of the more important things in my electronics is, is my cell phone. Uh, <laughs> my, my son will attest to that. I think all three of you guys will too. I think that's um, your son's, uh, most important. Yeah. He's on it quite a bit too. <laughs> Cole, uh, likes his cell phone. There's some Snapchats and Instagrams. TikTok. And TikTok. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, uh, one of the first things I do in the morning is I call Dennis, uh, on our way out, find out where he's going to fish. So, uh, it's always a good spot to fish is where the clock doubts at. Uh, same with the hiatus, salmon slayer. Uh, but when I leave the dock in the morning, um, uh, as soon as I, I clear the marina, you know, my radar's up in the channel. Um, uh, you know, we had <clears throat> talked off camera about, you know, some light issues. Uh, as the summer gets more progressed, uh, it's darker, earlier, longer. Um, People get excited about the Kings. They, you know, well, I don't need a stern light. Well, you really do. Um, make sure your lights are working. Uh, but uh, when I leave, radar's up, uh, uh, fish finder's on, depth finder, um, and we get outside the pier heads and, you know, figure out where we're going to fish and power up, um, keep my radar on about three-quarter of a mile range. Uh, I feel like I can maneuver uh, quickly if something comes up, but, uh, once we get out there, uh, first thing that goes in the water, uh, besides my, uh, blue bubble, blue fairways is a, uh, is my fish hawk. Uh, as soon as I, my diver starts creeping out, I set my out and down and find my temp, um, see what my speed is and, uh, proceed to set the rest of the spread from there. And what kind of uh, electronics are you running? Uh, Raymarine, uh, Raymarine radar, Raymarine autopilot, uh, uh, both, uh, uh, C series, C120 series. Um, fish finder, uh, is instrumental when we shut down. It's always nice when you shut down and, and see the hooks on the screen and, mm -hmm. and, and, and know you pick the right spot, you know, yep. and, uh, that, that, that helps us start. You know, uh, you usually see the thermocline on it, uh, along with your fish hawk to confirm it and go from there. Yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds about right. Uh, Dennis has, uh, got some new electronics this year. So yep. maybe, t yeah. maybe mention a little bit about that transition too. Yep. I, uh, I made the transition from pretty much all, all rain. Well, I guess my rain marine, uh, I had a rain marine radar. I had the Rance fish finder. And I had a Raymarine autopilot, and um, all of them worked very good for me. Um, but they were they were at an age where I knew it was a matter of time before I was going to have some issues um, with stuff failing. Um, they were thirty plus years old, and um, I was in a position where I could upgrade. And so I chose to go with uh, uh, I stayed with Raymarine autopilot uh, because I work at Abrahamson Marine. And I install quite a few electronics. And uh, of, of all the autopilots I've installed, uh, the Ray Marine seems to be the, it just seems to be the top of the, uh, of the crowd. I mean, the thing just works. It does. It, uh, 
very little input. There are no calibrations anymore. Basically, you install it and start fishing it. And um, I did I did switch over my fish finder to Garmin and my radar to Garmin. Um, and I, I'm still learning, but I, I like what I've seen so far. Um, I'm building trust in my radar. Um, my fish finder is working just like my Lowrance did. My Lowrance used to, uh, I mean, marked as good as any, yeah. any uh, equipment out there. And I was very, very concerned that the Garmin would not mark as well. And for, I don't know, for the month that I've been fishing the Garmin, it is, it's the same. So I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy with that. Uh, I think the transducer has a lot to do with that. So, you know, same deal when I'm, when I'm leaving in the morning, you know, my number one thing going is my radar, uh, shows me the boats that I, number one, the boats I can see and the boats that I maybe I can't see if they're, if they're, you know, missing a light or all their lights. Um, you know, I see the pier heads, um, Obviously, once I get to where I'm going to fish, you know, my chart plotter and my fish finder are probably my number one uh, electronics because it tells me how deep I am. Um, a lot of times we're fishing the bank. We want to be right there, 100, 110, 90. And without knowing that, you're really fishing in the dark. Um, and, of course, when I start fishing, uh, my probe is the first thing that goes down. Same deal with Kevin. Um, my very first rigger, I said, I put, I run my probe on the chute. I go back, set my probe down with my chute. <clears throat> I go back up to the helm and I look and I just, you know, I, I look at the temp. If I don't like it, I bump it down. If I think it's too cold, I bump it up. Um, but that, that, that is the order of, uh, the electronics that I think are important. Sure. Davey? Um, yeah, I pretty much... Pretty much the same. The uh, <coughs> I think my 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 fish finder is 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 my most important because um, I spent most of my years not having uh, radar. I did have a more sub troll for a long time, and and and, and uh, but that thing was on and off and on and off, and I I now have a fish hawk, but that is that is a very good unit. Um, that's on. Yeah, it's on. <laughs> it's on. I have a few issues every issues every now and then with the with the uh, the uh, Ray Marine fish finder, the transducer for that. I know. And, yeah, but for the most part, it works. It works pretty darn good. Um, I love my autopilot. Uh, up until recently, I never had a first mate, so without the autopilot, there was just you couldn't do it. Um, the radar is nice. It helps first thing in the morning to make sure that I don't have anybody close to me. Sometimes it doesn't matter because you get started setting up and next thing you know, somebody's right on top of you, but it, it helps, it helps to know that, that there's nobody right on top of you when you're getting set up first thing in the morning. Um, and, and it's great for, for making sure that, uh, you're not running anybody over. Um, but the, uh, the GPS also, um, you can uh, you can keep keep tabs on your direction, uh, your waypoints. Uh, if you got stuff marked like nets that are out there, yep. or you know, and, and there's a wreck that's out there, you can keep tabs on where all that stuff is when you're setting up first thing in the morning if you're near it, and uh, where when you can't see. Um, the uh the marine radios pretty much anymore we don't use them too much unless we're way offshore it's mostly cell phones so the cell phone's pretty important uh marine radios when we're way offshore and the cell phones don't work we we kind of all talk on one or two channels and we can communicate a little there communication you know in in this in this day and age and and with fishing when when the fishing's tough, it it's, makes all the difference in the world being able to communicate with, with each other and stay on top of the fish. But. Yeah. So I'm the cell phone. <laughs> so the cell phone is an absolutely critical tool. Absolutely. Um, we have some group texts 
and you know, there's 10 captains and, and one of them. And, and you know, the first hour I, I have 40 bites, what they were, where they were, what baits they were. They're probably a 10 inch blue bubble, not an eight, <laughs> But, uh, but you, you, only, you only know that it was a blue bubble. But you only know it's right. a blue you bubble. Know, you but, should ask specific questions. This kind of like, if you watch this repeatedly, um, or watch all the all the episodes, you, you're going to see like the same things come up over and over. And one is a network, having a network of fishermen that you talk to every day. So important, critical. Absolutely critical. You um, really, you really figure it out this time of year too, when yeah. there's only one or two boats going out. It, it's. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Uh, um, you know, but there again, you know, you mentioned you using your chart plotter to know your direction. Um, you know, speed direction, same thing. Uh, once you figure that current out, Get on 180 degrees from that current should line you back up again. It doesn't always, but that's your good starting point. So knowing how to use your track feature, knowing how to, you know, um, understand your electronics is very important. So, but I'll go through the same the same thing that you guys did. Um, absolutely, first thing in the morning, radar is my number one thing. I, you know, I mean, I think it's every it, the bigger the boat that you get on, the harder it is to see. And um, as you get into bigger and bigger boats, when you're in a 16 foot aluminum boat with nothing around you, there's no eyes and glass. You're not looking through a windshield. You have pretty good reference of what's going on. Um, as you get into bigger and bigger boats, you lose it. You lose the ability to hear. You lose, you know, the you're always looking through glass or eyes in glass or or something. Um, so having radar, believing your radar is a huge thing. And I think we can hit on the radar thing that you have to believe what your radar is telling you. And um, like Kevin said, having it on three quarters of a mile range is really nice. You normally have multiple rings. They're normally quarter mile rings. It gives you enough time to react. If you run your GPS in the same scale, you are seeing the same thing. You should be seeing, if you're near land, you should be seeing the same things on your GPS as you're seeing on your radar. If you're seeing both, it's a comforting feeling. Yeah. Um, if you're not, then <laughs> you're trying to figure that out. But um that's important. A lot of the new electronics do overlay. Uh, I I'm not very comfortable with the overlay thing. I like to see it separately. I like to be able to look and look. And I I run heads up on my radar and north up on my chart plotter. That's just that's how I run the boat. And they gonna they're going to not be the same, but to me they are. You know, I mean, but right. what you're understanding what you're comfortable. yeah, what you're comfortable with is is an important thing. Um, Using your radar and being comfortable with your radar happens during the day when you can see. Because if the radar is showing you what you're seeing with your eyes, then when you can't see with your eyes, you're going to totally trust your radar. And that's the way that it needs to be. And then you build your trust. Dennis is, you know, learning new firmware, learning new menus, sequences, and all of that stuff, and learning uh, a new even a fish finder, it's going to look different than what a Lawrence is going to look different than a Garmin, than a Raymarine or a Furuno or whatever it is. But if you spend that money um, to buy the, the equipment, take the time to learn it and take the time to watch YouTube videos about it. No matter what you're running, there's a video about it. Um, but I will say running it when you can see trusting it even if it's just a chart plotter mm -hmm. if you're running the chart plotter during you know all the time it's always there when you can't when you have to rely on it you're going to believe it a lot more so that's an important thing um well, and, and like you know anything that we do out there there's a lot of repetition we try and repeat repeat, repeat, repeat. what we're doing yep. you know same lead same depth same water temp uh electronics same thing um when I run in from a trip, wherever we're at, I go to my waypoint out in front of Ludington Harbor. Um, out front, though. Out front. And not outside. outside. <laughs> but my, waypoint, my, my waypoint is about 400 yards west of the center of the channel. Um, and you can line up with the lights. And, and, you got the interior lights and the, and the, and the outside. Exactly. Lights. 
and whether I can see 20 feet or 20 miles, um, I, I run in on my radar. I run in on my yep. autopilot. Um, you know, it gives me that confidence when it's dark or it's foggy I, that I know what I, and you, you touched on it, um, do it in the daylight. So you know what a, you know, that's a 16 foot lunge that that's what one looks like. Or yep. that's your wake or that's your wake. Yeah. Sure. Or, Not a boat. You know, yeah. we had high water levels the last couple of years. Um, you know, I don't always see the outer piers. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I see the lights, mm-hmm. but you know, five years ago, you saw the whole break, the whole thing, right? yeah. and and you don't see that now because when there of was the high three water foot of wall. Right. Yeah. Now there's, you know, two now foot, there's foot and half. or <laughs> or there might be water coming over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So those are important things, um, for sure, to really know how to use your electronics and and learn them and spend that time. Um, especially your fish finder, uh, especially the new fish finders. There's a lot of cool features built into these, you know, so you have panoptics and some live scope stuff. Um, you have multiple transducer frequencies, uh, so you can run a tighter cone or a wider cone by the, the push of a button, or you can run them both at the same time. Right. Um, and so really understanding that stuff, I'm not necessarily like... I'm pretty good with electronics, but, uh, you know, I watch a lot of videos. That's how I learn a lot of the stuff that I'm trying to figure out, especially when it's taking a piece of electronic and using it for your application. Now, the Fishhawk is a, a, an electronic device that's made for our application and really our application only. Um, you know, once I'm where I'm going to fish, the most important thing is is by far my Fishhawk. And I drive entirely by that, by the speed that it tells me that's, that's how I drive. I don't like to move my fish hawk, um, unless there's a massive change in the thermocline. Uh, we actually run a fourth downrigger that just has the fish hawk on it. And so it, it doesn't go up and down. It doesn't adjust. Um, if I set it at 80 feet, I usually run it at 80 feet all day. Um, I, I like to know that what I was doing a while ago, I'm doing again. And that goes back to the repetitiveness. But we, we've been talking off camera uh, quite a bit about this top, these topics. And, and one thing that was brought up is that not all fish hawks are exactly the same. And, and not all temperature probes are definitely all read differently. So you revert back to your GPS speed, which is it is Eat exactly what it is you know if it says 2.3 on mine and kevin says 2.3 we're going the same speed as long as we're going the same direction correct um and you know magnetic compass headings and gps speed don't lie right unless you got a you know a speaker mounted too close to your <laughs> compass <laughs> but yeah, but uh, I don't think there's any GPS calibration. No, yeah, yeah, you know, you don't jump in your GPS and adjust <laughs> that, and uh, the drone finds you. But you know, <laughs> um, the Fishhawk does have some ability to to be calibrated, yeah. and you talked about that. Maybe you could mention that again, like what your process was. So that. my process when I got my Fishhawk, um, I, I noticed right away that my speed and my temperature was a little bit off of where my uh, Lawrence at the time read. So what I did was I I know that my my Lawrence was getting my speed off a speed wheel on a through hull transducer, which is about let's say three feet under the water. So I I put my my probe about three feet down, and I had, I calibrated the temperature and the speed to what my Lawrence said. So. My water speed of my Lowrance, if it said 2.3, I calibrated my, my fish hawk to read that same, that same speed. And same with temp. I, I know darn well that if my, you know, my, my probe uh, was three feet down and my transducer is about three feet under the water, they should read about the same. So, um, and, and they didn't. Like the, the fish hawk right out of the box did not read exactly the same. And I don't, it doesn't really matter which one was right and which one was wrong. Uh, what's important to me is they they both yeah. were the same, um, that they were consistent. And you you could calibrate your fish hawk, yeah. And you couldn't I, calibrate your Lorant, right? So you could, but I yeah, I sure. didn't look into it. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted them to be the same. So 
I knew that, you know, 70 degrees on my fish finder was 70 degrees on my fish hawk. Yeah. Didn't absolutely. matter if it really, it was 69 or 71, but they were the same. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> so, and, and that, you know, goes back to just repeating the same yeah, things over and over. You want to, you want to be able to repeat. I think really the things that separate guys that catch a lot of fish from guys that catch a few fish is being able to absolutely uh, duplicate the same the same process and does it always work no but if you do it if you do it the same (laughs) it helps i think it does yeah and uh you know using your electronics and understanding your electronics and and definitely when you get into uh, running a vessel and not so much the fishing end of it but just the safe running of a boat Knowing how to use your electronics is important, oh, yeah. and like Kevin said about um, if you're if you're leaving a new port, drive directly, leave you know leave the pier heads, go a quarter mile out and put right. a waypoint. And and if you go you know if you're in Michigan, you're probably going to drive a quarter mile west. So you know if you get to that waypoint and you put it on a due east, you're going to go right through the pier heads. And that's a good thing to do and a good thing to, you know, the, the, the maps are pretty phenomenal mm-hmm. now oh, yeah. and, and GPS is extremely accurate now. So I, I think that there's less, um, people don't think to do that as much, but it's always, a, it's a good habit to be in and maybe to put a waypoint in the, in the channel directly in line so that you know that if once you get to this you go 90 degrees right or or 100 you know well i mean we we, or we come and go so often our track line uh, yeah ends up being <laughs> a half inch wide by the end of August. It, right so, absolutely uh, uh but you, you never know when when a piece of electronics might go out absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah you know, so it's good and if you base a, lo- a lot off your compass numbers yeah. um well, and if you can see Captain Dave, he's still got a sextant on his boat. <laughs> <laughs> we just follow Captain Dave. He's stargazing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I hope that this, uh, you know, gave you a little bit of information. Uh, thank you to Virtue Ciders for making, uh, sponsoring this episode and, and Captain Chucks for always supporting what I'm trying to do here and get some great information out to you. Uh, if you have an idea for an episode and send me a message. I'd be happy to try to include some of that in this. Actually, this episode was, was brought up by our viewers. So, uh, and we'll have some more coming up in the near future. The same, uh, thanks for tuning in this week. Get out there. The fishing's still pretty good. Uh, hopefully it's going to hold out until uh, we can't get out there anymore. Or deer hunting season starts, right. whichever comes first. But, uh, thanks for tuning in and we hope to see you again next week.